Hi, this is Kat with Beta Halik, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to achieve a marbled effect in resin. So let me start. I have some resin here curing, so I'm going to get to that in just a moment. But what I have here is a couple of examples. So I want to start by showing you what I've done so far. Now, one of these is actually a better example. And this is an open back bezel that I was able to use. So you can see that the marbling doesn't really go all the way through to the back. And I'm going to show you why that is when I show you the marbling effect. But how cool is that on the front? It's very neat. So this is how you can do it in an open back bezel. I just use some packing tape on the back side. And we do have other videos that show you how to pour resin into open back bezels. So I'm going to direct you there for this. So I have that version. And then I also have another little version that didn't work quite as well. Now this is a backed bezel. And what happened here was I did the resin too early. And I'm going to show you why you wait. You kind of want to achieve that particular effect. And there's a technique that I'm going to teach you so that this doesn't happen. But I did want to show you my little oopsie piece so that you can see that this is a little bit of a more advanced technique, but it still looks kind of neat. You know, it just wasn't quite the clear marbling that I had wanted it to look like in that one. So I'm going to give it a try in this nice, big, beautiful bezel. It's a sort of upside down teardrop, which I love. So we're going to get to filling this guy here. So I have my resin here. I am using the Easy Cast, and I poured this maybe about 20 minutes ago or so, so you can just see that it's a little thick, which is good. This is what we want. For your first pour, you're just going to pour it as though it were any other resin piece. So I'm just kind of scraping down the sides of my piece there. And I want to color this resin, so what I'm going to do first is pour out some resin that I can actually color so I keep this crystal clear resin right here so I can use that for some other projects because we are not going to need this much resin. All right, so I'm going to pour a good amount so I can color it easily. There we go. And I'm going to set this aside. All right, so now I have my resin here. And I want to try to get a, excuse me, I'm just going to use a little paper towel just to wipe off my glove there. All right. And you can see that my work surface is protected. I know I'm kind of working through a little quickly here, but it's because I want to work with this resin while it is still ready to go. Okay, so I have a white, a green, and a black. What I'm hoping to try to achieve here is a nice, dark, rich green color. So we're gonna see exactly how that works out. Anytime you're using dye for resin, just give it a little shake, shake it up. And my very messy bottle here. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to use a little toothpick and just try to get a little bit onto that toothpick. And actually, I'm going to pour this over a separate little vessel here because I want to make sure that I can control the amount of dye that I'm putting in. There's not particularly an exact science with the right amount of drops and dyes. You can just see that I'm kind of adding one drop at a time. And I know that won't be quite enough, but I'm going to add another, another drop here. Now, when you're coloring resin, there is an exact science in terms of you don't want to add too much dye to your piece because then what will happen is um, the resin won't set up the way you need it to. It, uh, it changes the chemical makeup of it. So we are going to be just sort of experimenting with adding dye just a little bit at a time. You can see that that starts to get nice and green and rich for me. And also, you know, you, you can see that I kind of eyeballed the amount of resin that I have here, so you can test that as well. All right, so it's still looking pretty transparent, but I'm having a nice green color there. So to add a little opaqueness, I think I'm going to try first adding a little bit of the black just to see how dark I can get this. All right, so again, I'm gonna use that same little technique. Let's give it a little shake. And using a fresh toothpick, I'm gonna to kind of pour it over my little cup here. And let's just try, oops, lost my little, my little blob. I think that's why they give you so much. All right, and I'm gonna bring that over here and drop in just one little drop of black. All right, let's set that aside. And let's see how this starts to turn out. Getting a little bit more in there. There we go, hopefully you can see against the white of my table. It's still looking pretty transparent. 
Let's go ahead and add in just another little drop of black before I add in the white. Now the white is going to really make it opaque, but it is also going to lighten it up a little bit. So that's why I'm trying to kind of go back and forth uh, with the black. I just wanna get that little drop in there. Boop, there we go. All right. And let's mix that in. You can also use a popsicle stick as well. I'm just using a toothpick just so I can kind of watch how this goes. All right, so we're getting there. And I know I promised you a marbling effect, so hold on, we're just getting our green where it needs to be. And I'm gonna use a fresh toothpick again. You do kind of go through, sadly, a lot of material when working with resin, but at least toothpicks are inexpensive. <laughs> You can also use plastic sticks if you want and you can try to wash them. That's always an option for you as well. And one drop of the white. All right, so let's see. This is one drop of white. Now it's really gonna start to make it opaque, but like I said, it's gonna get that really pale green color going in there, which you might not mind. So we're just gonna mix that up. The opaque colors, you really have to mix quite a bit. All right, so yeah, see how that one little drop of white really changed what's happening in here. So you can make the decision to try to go back to the green and add a little bit more green. I'm gonna try to add a little bit of black actually because what you want with when you're doing the marbling effect is to really try to create a nice contrast because we're gonna marble with the white. So you actually get a little sneak preview of what that's gonna look like a little bit, hopefully. <laughs> if all works the way I want it to. And you know, like you can see on my table here, I have several pieces of, several bezels. And the reason for that is that you just wanna be at the ready with other bezels because you're gonna have a lot of resin left over so you can create other things. And there's always the opportunity that something just doesn't turn out the way you want. It's, it's sadly the, the reality of working with such a fickle material like resin. All right, so that's adding a little bit more of that darkness back in there. It's not quite as the emerald color I hoped it would be, but I'm actually I'm not too mad at it. I kind of like it. It's very milky and very pretty. So now what we're gonna do, is so I'm gonna add in one more drop of that green and then I think I am happy and good to go. All right. And I'm just gonna use that to mix. All right, closing up my colors here really quick and setting those aside. All right, let's get that green back in there. Yeah, that's, that's the color I want. Very pretty. All right, so the last thing I'm going to add to this, because <laughs> why not, is I'm going to use some crystal clay sparkle dust. Now I have some silver and I have some gold. I want to use both, but for the green, I'm going to add just a little bit of silver just to give it a little shimmer. And then when we go to add the white, I'm going to add in that gold color. Okay, so here, here's a little tip for me to you. Set your resin aside, take your sparkle dust out to the side and open it away from your resin because you do not want to get too much of this into your resin you want to be able to add it gradually and slowly. All right, so I'm just gonna add a little bit there. And you can see that I'm doing this with a toothpick so you can really see how fine that is. All right, I'm gonna set that aside very carefully. And let's go ahead and mix in that silver. And it's just gonna give just a little bit of shimmer and sparkle to our resin. Not too much, I don't want it to be overpowering, but just a little, little dimension there. All right, so now our resin is ready to add. So I'm gonna take my toothpicks out. Now for this, I like to use a small popsicle stick. I think it just helps graduate that resin right in there. So we have our bezel ready to go. It's on a nice flat surface. And now we're gonna start to add our resin and go ahead and just grab a little bit at a time. And we're just gonna place it into the bezel and because we know that we're gonna be doing a marbling effect, we don't wanna fill it up 
because we want to be able to add more resin later. We're going to add that white resin to marble it. So you can just see that I'm kind of pushing it around just a little bit because it wants to stay in its original space. So I'm just kind of adding and just pushing it around, allowing it to go into those other spaces. You can also get a little closer to the edge. And because we have this little point down here, I'm really going to try to get it in there. And go ahead and push it towards the sides. It'll start to connect with the sides and move all the way around. And just take your time. Resin is a very fickle thing, like I said. So just push it to the sides there. There we go. I think I'll be able to add a little bit more. There we go. All right, so I'm just going to kind of rotate this. And once it finds its way to the edges, as you can see, it starts to want to go towards there, towards the, towards the edge, and it works itself up the sides. So you can just kind of rotate, and I'm just going to very carefully. We don't want any overspill here. You can see that I'm kind of underfilling the bezel, especially as we're starting here, because I want the top to be flat. But I still want that marbling effect. All right. I'm just kind of pushing it towards the edge there. I'm actually really happy with this color green. It's not what I had fully intended. I thought it would be a little darker than this, but you know what? I kind of like it. It looks like a little jewel. All right. So now it's finding its way towards that tip. I'm going to add in just a little bit more resin just to the main piece here. And it'll sort of fill and level itself out. It is self leveling resin. There we go. All right, so that's as much as I want to fill it. I'm going to set that green aside. I can use that for a different project. And let me just double check that it's getting towards that little guy there. This is where those toothpicks come in nice and handy. I just want to make sure he's getting all the way up in that little corner. There we go. All right. Perfect. So now here's where we're going to talk about the marbling. So I have this set. I'm going to wait about an hour until I start checking this. What we want, the, the idea is that we want this resin to start to set up so that when we go in, drop in our marbling effect, that this is going to be really easy to kind of move around, but it's going to hold that shape. So start checking this within about an hour. There are many factors that go into why you'd want to wait maybe a little bit longer or a little bit less. It could be a little warm in your space. It could be, um, you could have high humidity. There's a lot of different factors. So, you know, just check, you'll know, and I'll show you how we're going to know because I'm going to keep this little green resin here and you'll be able to see um, this kind of set up and see how... <clears throat> When I drop it in there, it just disappears immediately. So what we're going to look for later is when that doesn't happen. So I'm going to come back when this is ready and I'll show you how we're going to do that next step. If you start to see some bubbles form, you can take your lighter, light it up and wave it across the top just sort of as it's setting up, but don't heat it up too much. We don't want it to over cure. All right. So there we go. I will see you guys back here in about an hour, but it will be about 10 seconds in movie time. All right, see you back here in a minute. Okay, welcome back. So for me, it has been about an hour and a half or so since I've, I've been kind of checking my resin. It's been about a total of two hours since I initially mixed my resin. So this is the piece that I've been working with here. And here's the white that I want to use to do uh, my little swirl with. But I first want to show you kind of what you should be looking for in terms of, you know, having your resin be set up. So this is the green. So you can see this is really nice and kind of almost very goopy. And it's keeping that shape on the bottom, which is what I wanted to show you. Just enough to sort of kind of feel a little, little more viscous. So you can just sort of see how that is a little, little goopier. All right. Now, before I uh, go into this, what I did first off camera is I mixed my uh, fresh white resin. And then I added in the gold sparkle dust here. 
I thought I was gonna get a really fun sparkle color, but all it actually did was kind of turn my resin, and this has a nice little pearlized effect to it, but it turned the resin a little yellow. So I'm not gonna use this, so I'm glad I sort of tested this out. I did want to get a little bit of gold in here, but I just, it's, it's not the way that I wanted it to. I just don't think it's gonna look right having that sort of creamy color with the green for my purposes here. And also I think you'll be able to see the swirl a little bit easier with just the white. So again, this is kind of what you're looking for. This almost looks a little bit more now like glue. You can see that it holds a little bit of its shape, but it still disappears in there. So this is about what we're looking for here. Now, if yours is a little bit thicker than this, that's okay, but any thinner than this, I wouldn't do this next step just yet. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna need some fresh toothpicks. So have those at the ready. And now, when you go into your bezel, we're just gonna place a couple of little drops and let those sit for a minute, and then we are going to do the swirl effect. So just, figure out how big of the drops that you want. Now this is gonna take a minute for them to actually drop into the resin, which is why I say to just kind of just be patient and let it sit. And you'll notice the technique that I'm gonna use. I'll just kind of talk through while we're waiting for that to drop. The technique I'm gonna use is allowing the resin to get in there. You can push all the way down to the bottom because this is not an open back bezel if you wish. However, just be aware that once you push your toothpick in, you don't wanna pick it up, because in essence what that does is that starts to mix the resin, so you're gonna lose that whole uh, marbling effect. Okay, so there's one little drop, and you can make your drops all different sizes, this is entirely up to you. I'm gonna do another one that's kinda of down here, and just sort of let that drop off. But yeah, that's what happened with the blue one that I showed you earlier is that I was picking up my toothpick thinking that I could sort of fold over the resin to get that marbled effect and it just did not achieve the way I wanted it to. All right, getting closer. And I'm gonna try to lift that off. There we go. All right, I'm gonna do one more. It's gonna be just a nice little small, small piece down here towards the tip. And just be patient, your resin isn't going anywhere. I know the suspense is probably killing you. <laughs> but you also want to use a fresh toothpick. You don't wanna use the one that you've been mixing with because you're gonna have all this extra little, little bit of resin on it. So you just wanna make sure See if I can't get a little more to get it to drop a little faster, but I do wanna do just a tiny little piece here. Do another one. I'm just gonna do another little one that didn't quite work. And you can just see how that's reacting to the resin that's already there. All right, so that's what I'm gonna start with here. So now I have my fresh uh, toothpicks, and now you're just gonna dip it into the white and drag it around in whatever marbled effect that you want. So because I have this big one up here, I'm gonna kind of start here and start just kind of dragging it around. All right, I'm gonna hold my piece. And remember, don't pick up. Until you get to where you want it to be. So that is how you can achieve that marbled effect. And I'm actually very happy with that. It's nice and subtle. I'm gonna leave it just like that. It should set up really nicely. You can, at this point, if you did want to add another drop in there and drag that through, you can absolutely do that. So this is one of those things. But again, because this has that green resin on it, uh, you can either use the other side. But for safety, just to keep everything nice and clean, I'm just gonna set that aside. And you can use a fresh toothpick if you did wanna do another little uh, drop of white. You can see there's not as much up here. I kinda like the way that looks. It's very subtle. It's a nice effect that I wanted. So I am happy with that. 
but that's how easy it is to achieve that marbled resin look. All you need to do is just sort of wait, let the resin kind of set up, and then you can sort of manipulate it a little bit. If you notice that it's a little too hard to drag through, you may have missed your opportunity, but that was sort of the perfect amount of time for me, and really you can just check by what's in the cup here, because you can't really check what's already in your bezel, but you can check what's in the cup there, and you can just see that it starts to look like a goopy kind of a glue, and it leaves a little bit of shape at the bottom, but still becomes part of that resin, because we don't want this to sit on top. So that is how you achieve your marbled effect in resin. I'm going to finish this project and this will be available at betaholic.com as well as all of these supplies and tools that you've seen here today. If you're new here to our YouTube channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button below to get all the latest from Betaholic.